Here are seven reasons why we can know that Jesus is truly present, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. Number one, because Jesus said it. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, my blood. If Elijah can have the power to call down consuming fire from heaven, why can't the words of Christ transform the elements? God gave us breadcrumbs throughout scripture and salvation history, starting with Genesis. And Melchizedek, who is the king of peace, brought out bread and wine. Now he was a priest of God the Most High. Jesus is the great high priest, like Melchizedek, as Hebrew states. The book of Malachi talks about the grain offering offered from the rising of the sun to its setting. Exodus talks about the bread of the presence being set out until the end of time. The Gospel of Matthew says, And surely I am with you always until the end of the age. Jesus is the bread of life. He was born in Bethlehem, which means house of bread. He was laid in a manger where sheep are fed and come to eat. We are the sheep. Christ is the good shepherd who feeds and provides for his sheep. Jesus appeared to them in a different form in the Gospel of Mark. The disciples recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Number three, the Eucharist is the fulfillment of the Jewish Passover. On the second to last Passover that Jesus celebrated with his disciples, he laid the groundwork for the Last Supper. At the start of John chapter 6, Jesus feeds 5,000 men with five loaves and two fishes. He has 12 baskets of leftovers. This refers to the bread of the presence from Exodus and points to a new Exodus in a new covenant. After this miracle, he goes on to tell his followers that he is the new manna and you must eat his flesh to have life within you. He backs up this claim seven times in John chapter 6 to emphasize his point. The Bible uses the word trogo, which means to gnaw or to chew, and is never used figuratively. He lets the disciples who struggle with this teaching leave, and he doubles down when his apostles question him. In the Jewish Passover, the Jews had to kill the unblemished lamb and actually eat the lamb. Jesus is the Lamb of God who fulfills the Old Covenant, and we know that all the fulfillments are perfected in the New Covenant. While the Eucharist is a mystery, we can come to accept that Jesus has the power to give us this miracle. Jesus transforms water into wine. God speaks things into existence, like, let there be light. Jesus is the Word made flesh. What Jesus says is. His words affect and transform reality. When two or more are gathered in his name, Jesus is truly with us. He is truly speaking to us in his written word, the sacred scriptures, and he is truly present in the Eucharist. Another reason why the Eucharist equals Jesus is because of history. While the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist has never been an easy teaching, it has always been accepted as doctrine for all Christians from the time of Christ through today. Throughout Christianity, Christians have debated about everything, from the canon of scripture to the divinity of Christ to the circumcision, baptism, interpretation of scripture, the trinity, etc. While the Eucharist is a mystery and it requires faith, there was no serious theological concern with this doctrine until the 1200s when the church was required to define Christ's teaching even more fully. Theologian Dr. Peter Kreef says, if the first 1500 years of Christians were wrong about the Eucharist, and it is just a symbol, then we are not only idolaters, but they are the stupidest idolaters in history. They're bowing down to bread and worshiping wine, thinking it is Almighty God. How could they be so stupid? And more important, how could the Holy Spirit fall asleep and wait till the Reformation to reveal this big mistake? The fourth cup. For those who study and understand the Jewish Passover, as Jews then and now know, you will learn that there are four cups of wine that are drunk throughout the sacred meal, as well as the other songs and ritual. At the Last Supper, Jesus and the Apostles are celebrating the Passover, but they do not complete it. Jesus goes through all the rituals and traditions, but he himself takes the place of the Lamb and intentionally postpones the drinking of the fourth and final cup. He says, truly I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Jesus is then handed over, scourged, and hung on a cross, turning the crucifixion into a sacrifice. From the cross he exclaims, I thirst. He was given a sour wine, the fourth cup. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished. And bowing his head, he yielded up his spirit. What is finished? Is salvation complete? 
No, he hasn't risen yet. The new covenant started in the upper room on Mount Zion at the Last Supper and completed with the final sip of sour wine on the cross at Calvary is now complete and finished. We believe that the Eucharist equals Jesus because of the Bible. We've seen that the Bible repeatedly supports the claims that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. Another biblical approach would be to recognize that nowhere in the Bible does it claim that the Eucharist is just a symbol. If we are to be consistent and take the Bible as God's words, we cannot say that the Eucharist is just a symbol since the Bible never makes this claim. Finally, there are Eucharistic miracles. While this is a tough teaching and requires faith, God often strengthens our faith through miracles. There are numerous public miracles and countless private miracles attributed to Jesus in the Eucharist that can be researched, studied, and understood to strengthen our faith in his teachings. I encourage you to look up the miracle of Lanciano that took place over a millennia ago and has been examined by scientists. You can still view the flesh of Christ in the host that has been miraculously preserved today. We are not only spiritual, but also physical beings. We relate to and comprehend things on a spiritual and physical level, and that is why the physical is important and significant. God took on human flesh to fully reveal himself to us. Jesus gives his body in the Eucharist to nourish our bodies and our souls and to help us grow in intimate union with him. Reducing the Eucharist to a symbol is like reducing marriage to just a friendship. Like the disciples, we beg him, Lord, give us this bread always. We want to see, touch, feel, and be nourished by Jesus himself. Jesus told them, do not labor for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you. Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate the manna but died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. I close by asking the same question that Jesus asked his apostles after the Eucharistic discourse in John chapter 6. Do you want to leave me too? My hope and prayer is that you answer with faith in Jesus' word, along with Simon Peter who replied, Lord, to whom would we go? You have the words of eternal life.